Are my slides are seen? Yes. Uh, thank you, my dear Karu. One minute. <laughs> Thank you. Sorry for the interruption. Now, um, I am thankful to all our uh, PGA colleagues, alumni association for having invited me to speak on this echo cardiography in coronary artery disease. This is a very favorite topic uh, which I have been uh, advocating and uh, I shall uh, class this in three groups, three and four. First is acute coronary syndrome, second is chronic coronary syndromes, third is uh, heart failure syndrome and then we have the uh, little bit uh, uh, devotion to heart failure, I mean mitral regurgitation. So that is a short plan and uh, acute coronary syndrome, as all of you know, is a, a term is applied to patients with uh, patients in whom there is suspicion of confirmation of acute myocardial ischemia or infarction, non-ST elevation, am I? ST elevation, am I? And unstable angina are the three traditional types of ESES. Now, the role of echocardiography. Uh, has never been uh, recognized. That is the uh, one of the concerns which I would like to raise. Um, straight away, the patient is taken for uh, ECG, troponins are done, and the uh, echocardiogram takes a back seat. That uh, should never be uh, the attitude. However, uh, this is the pathophysiology of the acute coronary syndromes, and uh, this is the uh, plaque rupture which happens a small animation which results in all the uh, acute coronary syndromes uh, which uh, happen. A complete blockage this is a block rupture, a complete blockage will result in the infarction, and uh, incomplete will result in a non SK elevation MI and unstable engine IV uh, involvement is much less. So, first of all, ECG is taken. Uh, based on ECG ST segment elevation, the ACS is uh, classed into uh, non uh, SC segment. This is the SC segment elevation in my So, SC segment elevation, and here uh, there is no SC segment elevation. And uh, when there is a added troponins, Proponents are usually elevated in uh, SEMA, SA STEMI. Uh, normal uh, proponents are very highly uh, uh, unusual in STEMI. And then you have to think of aborted myocardial infarction. Uh, proponents are elevated in uh, non STEMI, then it is non STEMI. If they are not elevated, it is unstable and And uh, this is the uh, latest uh, European Society of Cardiology 2023 recommendations for uh, acute coronary syndromes. And uh, what they recommend is ECG, physical examination, clinical history, vital signs, and uh, high sensitivity troponin I and focus. I, what I want to uh, advocate here is the focus. Focus is pocketly carried ultrasound. You can see here. And uh, this is a classic UV scan, which our uh, residents carry. And uh, and the, it has the advantage that uh, you can have the simultaneous uh, ejection fraction calculation, regional wall motion abnormality assessment, and uh, assessment of mechanical complications. So now this wired uh, uh, pocket uh, ultrasound has been replaced by a V scan air or um, the ultrasound with uh, it does not have any wire. You can see here it is directly connected to your iPhone, I, I mean phone or iPad, 
and then you see that you just carry that in your pocket so this is a very uh, classical equipment which should be recommended in the acute coronary syndrome now coming to this uh, findings we will go case by case case examples and then discuss this now um, this was in 2009 when i was in vrh as i told you can see here the ECG of uh, acute myocardial infarction. And this is the echocardiography done at that time. This is the 3D echocardiography. It's a classical uh, long axis view. It's a short axis view, but uh, BSL, mid LV level, and this is the apical four chamber, the classical four uh, views which you see here. And coronary artery distribution, you have to remember. That is the most important thing which I want to emphasize here. You can see here, uh, this is the short axis at uh, medieval level, short axis at uh, papillary muscle level, and this is at the uh, apical level. Here, this is uh, apical sep septum, this is anterior septum, this is anterior wall, anterior lateral wall, inferior lateral wall, inferior wall, and inferior septum. And this area is the LED distribution, as you can see here. And uh, same six segments, you can see here, this is the six segments in basal and mid LV level, whereas in the apical level, there are only four uh, segments. The several segments are absent, the anterior wall, lateral wall, inferior wall, and uh, it goes like that. So you must remember, this is the uh, classical picture here, regional wall motion abnormality, and this patient had a, a LED occlusion and was stented and this is after the uh, study. Now, this is 2015. Now, we have got uh, one important advancement which has happened in calibration of the regional wall motion abnormality. Regional wall motion abnormality class in uh, grade of four, hypokinesia, akinesia, dyskinesia, and then aneurysm. Now, each is now replaced by this uh, Speckle tracking echocardiography, where it can be graded from minus 20 to plus 20. So, grade of 40, 10 times that of the regional wall motion abnormality in speckle tracking. And it is uh, focused as a, a bullseye map. So, this is a bullseye map, contains that the basal six segments. So, here you can see here. Basal six segments, anterior septum, anterior wall, anterior lateral wall, inferior lateral wall, inferior wall, inferior septum. Basal six segments, and then mid LV six segments, epical four segments. And uh, blue color is given plus, that is the abnormal uh, motion, this kinetic motion in the opposite way. And red color is the normal uh, motion. So when you have this, you have a bullseye map, it is very easily you can identify what is the area of the myocardium which is affected. You can see here, this is a rule applies for single vessel disease and for two vessel disease. Maybe abnormal in patients with multiple vessel disease. So you can also use this uh, 3D tomographic pattern. See, 3D tomographic pattern, which you see, uh, even have a cut from the LV apex to the base. The apex to the base, nine segments. And uh, these are the classical uh, three views, apical four chamber, apical two chamber, and apical three chamber. And you must identify the segments here. This is the inferior septum, you must remember, inferior septum, basal and middle view. And uh, this is the anterolateral segment, uh, basal, middle view, and this is the apical segment. Here in two chamber plane, this is the anterior wall and this is the inferior wall. And in the long axis plane or the apical three chamber plane, anterior septum and this is the infralateral wall. So you have to remember these things, classifications are done. It's very easy. And this patient had acute anterior with a total cutoff of the LAD. And the patient underwent uh, uh, angioplasty. And the results are good. This is a post angioplasty. You see that the complete area of uh, abnormality in that area has gone. 
So it's easy to quantify using the uh, spatial tracking uh, method. And 3D uh, ejection fraction is available. That also kills and gives you the surface rendered images. These are surface rendered images. Uh, failed thrombolysis has happened in uh, one of the recent cases. The patient was admitted with acute antivolumin, thrombolyzed with the anectoptase. And but uh, this is the uh, echocardiogram after thrombolysis because the patient came on late uh, night. And you can see this uh, LV apical clot, which is seen there, LV apical clot. In this patient and this the epicolate taxis zone anterior septum mid LV level and the basal level and you can see the LV apical clot you can see the 3D this hot model which is shown there and this patient was taken immediately for uh, uh, angiogram and then he had a total occlusion of the LED and he was uh, stented. And uh, that is the post PCA results. They're very beautiful. This is the post PCA ECG. And uh, this is the post PCA echocardiogram. As you can see, the, uh, the clot is not there. It's a small amount of uh, suspicion is that the original moving clot is not seen and the, the area of uh, strain abnormality has reduced. Now, another case. Uh, interesting case where there is ST elevation in AVR alone. Uh, this may be due to LMCA disease or proximal LAD or a severe triple vessel disease. And the this is the mechanism for this uh, ST elevation in AVR. And they can see this uh, complete as it may be due to complete ostial occlusion of the left main coronary artery or approximately LAD occlusion. Now we will have a case. This is the proximal. Uh, patient had only ST segment elevation in the AVR and uh, ST depression in lateral leads. And you can see here, this is the basal right plane view analysis, the regional wall motion numerator is there in anterior septum, anterior septum, anterior wall, and the LV apex. You can see that. And uh, this is the uh, angiogram. The patient had a tight lesion in the LED and he had a ramus lesion also. Oscillation with IMS and uh, OCA was more dominant. The patient was uh, taken up for angioplasty and stented. This is a post VCA. You can see the marker improvement in the region of all motion abnormality. It's just uh, the stain abnormality has decreased. This is the basal versus uh, basal versus. Uh, post PCA strain abnormal. You see that extensive the area has reduced. So, this trail mapping gives you this uh, advantage. Now, this is the ejection fraction, which was uh, 48 initially, 48, 92 to 61. And this analysis, you must remember, this is called as a pressure strain loop. This is a strain here, this is a pressure loop, the pressure is recorded. And this is called as brushed strain loop, which simulates your uh, uh, initial day analysis of uh, in physiology. We have analyzed the uh, uh, pathology, I mean, physiological principles of uh, muscle contraction. That you must remember that this cycle you can have that. And uh, this is the uh, start of the cycle contraction, then isovolumetric relaxation phase. And then filling uh, phase, right? But filling phase, we follow the this. So this is a pressure strain uh, loop, and you can see here this after the angioplasty, the pressure strain loop area under the curve has increased. So that is the clear cut advantage of having this analysis. Now we will see one case of the inferior spinning and. Uh, this is the patient with the inferior swimming. This is the patient with the inferior swimming. The patient presented with the SC segment elevation, inferior leads, and uh, RVMA also. SC elevation V3R, V4R, and V6R. And, uh, 
And this is the strain map you see here. This is a strain map. Inferior septum, unlike the anterior wall MI here, associated with the LAD territory, this is inferior wall MI, inferior septum, inferior wall, interlateral wall. It's clearly affected. This blue color, and this is the strain map and the GLS. And GLS is minus uh, 12. The diastolic function is very abnormal with the E baby time of 12. And this patient had a 99% activation in mid The patient was uh, taken up for PCI and stem. This is post PCA, and this is the post PCA uh, echocardiogram in triplane view. The regional wall motion of normality has decreased. The strain map, the strain abnormality has the area of strain abnormality has uh, decreased. And uh, and another case, this is a very difficult case. A patient came with the gas uh, heart failure. We really easily showed this uh, possibly uh, anterior MI. And you can see here the strain map. This patient, the patient has an, had an ejection fraction of only 22% marked uh, abnormality in the anterior wall, anterior septum, inferior septum, whole of the AV apex zone. You can see here. And uh, this is the strain map. Pressure strain map you can see here. The area under the curve is markedly reduced here, and the ejection fraction is around 22% only. This patient, uh, this is the uh, angiogram, which shows a marked 100% uh, uh, occlusion of the LED. Uh, in this patient, uh, we try to do the angioplasty, uh, but the patient went in for no reflux phenomenon from his. We did not uh, recover the patient. Uh, now we'll go see this uh, non semi SC segment depression in uh, lateral leads. And you can see here the um, original wall motion abnormality in the anterior septum and the inferior septum. And uh, the bullseye map makes the things easier to understand the regional wall motion abnormality. This is the uh, map uh, of these things. And you can see here, this is the pressure strain loop in this patient. And uh, you can see here, the ejection fraction is around 43%. And this patient had a RCA involvement. And uh, the patient was taken up for PCA and angioplasty. The final slide shows the good result. Now, the patients with uh, unstable angioplasty. This is a patient with unstable angina. And uh, you can see here, this patient should be taken for uh, uh, stress echo, if you have further this. This is a 75 year old male. This is the base of ECG, it's normal. And this is after the uh, exercise test. This again, this is a peak uh, SQ deviation, which uh, does not show any. Proper uh, deviation, abnormal deviation. So the patient uh, had the stretch echo simultaneously. So just put the transducer before your treadmill exercise and after treadmill exercise. You can see here, this is the basal uh, strain map. And uh, this is after the post stress. You see marked uh, abnormality in the strain in the anterior septum, inferior septum, and the LV apex after that. And uh, this is the uh, angiogram. This is the basal as well as this post stress compared. And uh, this is the angiogram, which shows that uh, the patient has that a 99% occlusion in the mid LED. The patient was taken up for uh, stenting and uh, underwent uh, PCI. And this uh, had a good result. It has grown from gun hood value. Yes. This is another case. You see with a uh, patient with uh, normal ECG and uh, this 71 year male, unstable angina, diabetes. This is a basal uh, And this is the immediate post stress mm -hmm. inferior uh, septum. Inferior wall, interlateral wall, you see the marked abnormality which happens there. And the patient has uh, mid RCA as well as the distal RCA lesion 
patient underwent uh, angioplasty and this is a final result. Patient is doing well. Now we can have this CACS post uh, PGA also. This is a baby who was uh, stented in 2020 in the LAD and OM1. And the patient went in for uh, instant restenosis. So redo PCI for instant restenosis 2021. Patient again had that symptom on uh, exertion and given at rest. So this is the ECG, basal ECG. This is uh, in the PTXI showing marked SC segment uh, depression. You can see here in V5, V6, SC segment depression and 2, 3, 8 also. <laughs> this is the basal echocardiogram strain mapping. Uh, this is normal, and this is the ejection fraction, and uh, this is the post-stress, <laughs> post-stress. She developed a strain abnormality in the anterior septum, and uh, with that, uh, there was a um, fall in the ejection fraction, most important, fall in ejection fraction, you can see here. This uh, fall in ejection fraction is uh, from a good ejection fraction to 46% in this patient. Basal, post-stress, basal post-stress. So this patient uh, went back uh, to the, the patient, uh, the PCA center, and uh, they did the angiogram. Patient had uh, stent thrombosis. The patient underwent CABA and she is doing well. Now again, this patient with uh, transistolic normal and the inferior OMI. You can see here this is uh, a and uh, this is the um, septum, inferior septum, as you can see here, the inferior septum. Okay. Ventricular septal rupture, inferior septum, there's a regional wall of motion in the inferior wall, in the inferior wall, in bulging in this. Yes, this patient had a BSR, and uh, this is the 2D compared to 3D, and the size of the rent can be seen in this. And uh, this is the uh, angiogram shows the VDASA 99% patient. And uh, non coronary ST elevation, this is a case of uh, Brugada syndrome, you can see here. And uh, it can be easily classified and uh, see that uh, this uh, stain map is normal in this patient. And they can identify the LVO, RVOT diameter, it is slightly in the upper border. This patient, angiogram is normal. Real troubles is a very interesting case. You can see uh, delayed presentation with the heart failure with the uh, See that and this patient uh, presented with acute MI, STEMI, uh, underwent thrombolysis uh, in 2020 June. And they can see here the patient underwent angiography. There was a 100% occlusion in the LAD. Because of a death of a co patient in the bed adjoining to him, patient ran away from the hospital. He was discharged against medical advice, and uh, in July he returned to the hospital and uh, with the class four symptoms, detected to have heart failure with reduced ejection fraction. PET scan done showed non viable myocardial. He was rejected for PCI by two centers. Now, I will just show you this case. So, this uh, for doing this uh, strain analysis, this is the same patient echo you can see here. This is a different patient echo. Uh, for doing the strain analysis, you can see. Uh, Just take the measure. I think I'm clear. Uh, do go for this uh, AFI. So the equipment automatically detects apical uh, three chamber, two chamber, and four chamber. It takes some time for the processing. And uh, you see this processing is underway. And you can see that. So many of us have the uh, wrong notion that uh, 
Spain takes a lot of time. It is so easy. I just recorded three deeds. One is the epical four chamber, the epical three chamber, the epical two chamber. Then just the AFI. And then you are in. The processing takes only two to three minutes. And it doesn't take much, much of your time. You can see here. And see the processing is complete. So now you can uh, go and see this is the epic three chamber view. Stain map is available. This is the uh, four, uh, four chamber view. And uh, the four chamber. And then you can check in the uh, two chamber also. This is the two chamber I am checking. See that it takes uh, early some time. So you have this. And you can have the... Uh, uh, traces also. So traces. This is the traces in all the views. And you can go for myocardial work from here. It's such a means. And you see that. This is the uh, pressure strain loop. This is the left ventricular pressure, which you did derive from the blood pressure recorded outside. And this is the strain map. So you see that from the zero, this is the contraction, and this is the um, maximal contraction case. Then end of contraction, isovolumetric relaxation phase, maximal filling phase. And you have the work index also. So this is uh, such an easy affair. We will go to back to our slide, that is a uh, non-viable myocardium. Uh, this strain mapping is useful in these patients. So exertion fraction is only 25%, that is why the patient has been ejected. See, mitral the patient, grade two, and uh, there is a totally occluded LAD. And you can see here, this is the LA volume, which is markedly increased. LA max is uh, 71 ml, and the LA strain is uh, 3%, 3%. So you can see the difficulties in these patients. And yet, this is a strain map. It is related only to that territory of the LAD, the LAD territory, anterior septum, anterior wall, and uh, this is the layer concept. You can analyze the strain by layer concept. And uh, without that, um, uh, unlike the PET scan, you can have taken, taken this case for um, angioplasty. Uh, on the table, the patient had uh, no reflow phenomena. It was managed successfully. The patient is uh, doing very well now. So, is the ejection fraction. So, conceptually, spittle tricking has this advantage. Is more sensitive in detecting viability in ischemic cardiomyopathy by this layer specific analysis. And the diagnostic accuracy is report, uh, related to uh, similar to uh, late gadolinium enhancement in you know, CMR. Now, coming to chronic coronary syndromes, I think uh, I'm having time. Uh, stress echocardiography is the rule of law of these patients. And uh, all of us know the theory behind the uh, stress. And uh, what we do is uh, just prior to the treadmill test, we prefer treadmill because it has so many advantages. You can take the heart rate, you do the blood pressure, you see the exercise capacity of the patient, VO2 can be calculated, and just record the images, three images from the apical uh, uh, views, that is apical four chamber, three chamber, and two chamber. If you have a 3D echocardiograph, just take triplane view. That's all. It's very easy to do that. And uh, treadmill has that advantage. And it's uniformly, you can find out. The sensitivity is around uh, 
uh, very good. The 72 to 86 percent specificity is around 77 to 95 percent. So these are the values. The LED is better detected in this. Limitations. The limitations are in patients with COPD, obesity, where you don't have a good window, chest wall deformity. As, uh, the problem is another problem is a steep learning curve. It may be easy in the hands of an expert, but for a novice, you have to get the views within seconds of the uh, treadmill, before treadmill and after treadmill. So it's an operator dependent. That is the most important point. And uh, the prognostic value of stress echo is comparable to stress stallion, and uh, it is comparable in uh, women also. And uh, now we'll have a case. This is a 56 year old uh, patient with the chronic stable angina. This is a fix uh, uh, exercise. It shows the AC element elevation to 3 AVF. And uh, this is the basal. Again, he had this basal. And post uh, exercise, you see that there is increased area of uh, strain abnormality, which results in this. So patient has a certain flux as well as RCA problem, patient underwent uh, PCI. In patients who cannot do this uh, exercise, this patient who had a, we'll see this case where uh, the patient had undergone knee, total knee replacement, this is the PSR. And uh, no, this is the case. Basal. This is a basal. You see that the WW stress is 5 mics infusion. This is a 30 mics infusion. 30 mics. So after that, uh, we'll see the contrast echocardiography. Contrast echocardiography uh, is refers to diagnostic ultrasound of the heart that is performed in conjunction with any acoustically active particle, including agitated saline. At present, three contrast agents are available in India, Sonaview, Luminity. Optison is presently not available. The agents are suspensions of microspheres filled with the perfluorocarbon gas and are similar to size of RBCs. Ultrasound contrast agents are intravascular tracers. They opacify the blood in cavities and in myocardial vessels. Since the blood volume within the myocardial vessel makes up only 7% of the myocardial tissue, myocardial opacification is always much less intensive than the cavity open. Now you see this is a case of ventral infarction. This is the strain button in the long next is view. This is a contrast echocardiography. The contrast is filling the cavity and simultaneously the perfusion images are seen there. 
This is in the four chamber plane. You can see that compared with the stress strain. I mean, the strain, the spirit dragging and lowering the beam. And uh, this is the anterior wall. Now, new recommendations are that following an acute anterior wall MI, contrast echo may be considered for the detection of LV thrombus. The apex is not well visualized on the echocardiography. So, this is a second case where a patient with anterior wall infarction, large LV epithelial clot, you can see that. This is the contrast echo. Uh, contrast filling the cavity and the, the LV epical clot is very well seen. Epical clot. Now coming to the third uh, topic that is heart failure. Can be defined as an abnormality of the cardiac structure or function leading to the failure of the heart to deliver oxygen at a rate commensurate with the requirements of the metabolic tissue. So it is mainly classified on the basis of ejection fraction. So patient MI can have a failure with uh, reduced ejection fraction, mid-range ejection fraction, or uh, preserved ejection fraction. So stage, these are the stages, stage A, B, C, and D. In all these stages, echocardiography helps you. Now, I will show some of the cases. And the ejection fraction is a simple measure of uh, global systemic function. And uh, 3D is always more accurate. The true FX is identified. Foreshortening error is not there. Segmental dilatation uh, can be identified very easily. So the ejection fraction calculation can be done in 3D. Very easy method. You can see here only two, two points. One is uh, placed over the FX. Second is placed over the um, midpoint. My God. Just pay. Uh, in all these patients, you have to identify these uh, subgroup also. The patient may have uh, aortic stenosis. This patient had aortic stenosis. See that at the back in addition to this. So, this usually may be a, a combination which you have to recognize in patients with uh, coronary artery disease and combined with. Um, Now, coming to heart failure with the preserved ejection fraction, the preserved ejection fraction. This is the calculation of the ejection fraction. It is coming in simple method. There is some problem with the PowerPoint presentation. Again, recurrently it is having problem. But failure with the preserved ejection fraction, uh, ejection fraction being normal, we have to record uh, some of these uh, backgrounds. 
most important thing is the mitral annular velocity. Mitral annular velocity recorded at septal and uh, lateral two areas, and then it can be average. This is the uh, E prime, this is the A prime. You can see that E prime is recorded, and then uh, TR velocity, TR jet velocity, and then mitral flow velocity. So you have to identify these things. E by E prime. So calculate the E E prime. This is a rule of seven, which we use to say um, it should be less than seven to calculate for LV dash by this function. And then E by E prime should be more than 14. 14. A rule of seven multiplication. And uh, TR jet velocity should be more than 28 millimeters. And the LA volume should be more than 35. So these are the easy criteria to identify the four common measures. First is uh, mitral E by E, E prime, E by E prime, and then TR velocity, LA volume. Simple. All the four, if they are abnormal, more than 50%, it is diastolic dysfunction. Diastolic dysfunction. And LA volume can be calculated very easily by this method. The advantages of 3D LA volume is that uh, you can simultaneously calculate the LA volume as well as the LA strain. See that LA volume. So this is the LA quantification. You identify just the metal wall center and then uh, the uh, regions are marked. And then you have the uh, LA strain values. You can see here the normal LA strain is around uh, 40, around 30 if it is reduced in grade 1, in grade 2, it goes around 20%, 24, 25%. And grade 3, it is uh, less than 10%. So this LA strain is the LA volume which you can identify by 3D echocardiography. This is a 58-year-old lady with a heart failure. You can see that. Uh, 575. So this, uh, shall I go to the last slide? You want uh, some time for a discussion this patient had? Dr. Paralaji? Sir, we have ample time, sir. You can, you can continue, sir. <laughs> okay, okay. So... So the patient had this inferior LMI and uh, strain of normality in the inferior one. The patient under the, uh, underwent angioplasty. This is a post-angioplasty. So this is a uh, heart failure with a preserved ejection fraction. Now, uh, these are the trials, which are uh, recent trials, which were beyond our purview. Now, coming to the last uh, section of our uh, discussion, mitral regurgitation. Uh, one, it is one of the most important complications for which uh, our interventional cardiologists are picking up active uh, intervention, structural heart intervention. Uh, secondary MR is the most common problem, secondary to uh, acute myocardial infarction and uh, LV dysfunction. So these are the types of uh, secondary MR you can have. And uh, this is a patient with uh, mitral regurgitation. You can see that. This is a two, 3D has the simultaneous advantage. You can have the orthogonally opposite view on this simultaneously. Is that this is a two L crop? Simultaneous view from this is view from the uh, LV. This is a view from the LA, the metal valve. You can see the Z is called as a dual crop. So see, this is a view from the left atrial side. See the iota. This is a left atrial appendage. And this is anterior mitral leaflet. This is a posterior mitral leaflet. Uh, A1, A2, A3, P1, P2, P3. This is uh, from the LV side. Uh, TE uh, will give you the accurate uh, quantification. 
And uh, you can see that uh, this is the T quantification which you see. This is the secondary mitral regurgitation. Again, it happens in ischemic DCM. You can easily differentiate both uh, by the speckle tracking echocardiography. The main uh, imaging questions which has to be answered in uh, assessing mitral regurgitation is what is the mechanism of mitral regurgitation of leaflet motion? Uh, you have to diagnose the carpentase, this is the carpentase classification based on uh, leaflet morphology. What is the severity of the mitral degradation? Is there uh, multiple parameters which are involved? And what are the consequences of MR on LV and LA on circulation? So this is how it goes. And these are the methods of uh, anatomic quantification. Anatomic quantification you can do by E or OEA. Uh, in 3D, if you have a 3D equipment, you can have anatomic regurgitant orifice area calculation. In secondary MR, if it is more than 0.2, it is classed as a, uh, severe. So this is the difference between the uh, European and uh, American Society of Eco Classification of this. This is the EC, ESC guideline, this is the AAC guideline. AC guideline divides this further into two, whereas this AC guidelines doesn't do that. The left atrial site and uh, MR quantification. This is moderate severe. 3D equipment wise, you can assess the vena contracta. This is the anatomic regurgitant orifice area and uh, 3D color Doppler stroke volume can be calculated. So we now can react with, so again, we are having the uh, problem with this. Um, probably because the files are long and नमस्कार क्या हो गए बस मजे में हूँ कभी से हेलो तो यू स्टिल कनेक्टेड Am I audible? Yes. Yes. Uh, there is some uh, power failure here. Uh, okay. I'm in Kodai Canal. Actually, I'm in Kodai Canal. So sorry for that. Uh, so I think I'll, I have almost covered all the topics. Uh, if there are any questions, we can uh, discuss. Sir, we invite Dr. U.P. Singh's uh, comments about severity of MR. Very recently, he had posted uh, that severity of MR should not be only judged by uh, the regurgitant volume and other things. So, if Dr. U.P. Singh sir is here, we'll invite his comments first. <laughs> I think let's uh, first discuss about coronary artery disease. Hi, Dr. Muthan, how are you? Fine. Okay. Welcome to see U.P. Singh. Yeah. So, 
So I think uh, uh, you've done a wonderful uh, this thing on a coronary artery disease uh, assessment. Okay. And uh, that's a very, very long topic. I don't think so. Single uh, a talk would have been uh, you know enough for that. We need to discuss direct visualization of the coronary arteries when you know so many other things like uh, Kawasaki disease and so coronary arteries are fascinating uh, structures anyway. I think uh, you asked me about that mitral regurgitation. Uh, that's true. You know, we uh, echocardiography unfortunately is uh, you know uh, taken as if it is uh, ECG and a te technician's job. So that's unfortunate, but that's actually what is happening. Uh, <laughs> we 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 see many reports where you know MR is just calculated and it's not even visual. I mean, they, it's not even they, they calculate the area and uh, jet area and L area. No, 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 they don't. It's just a visual impression. What you see, whether it's a, a mild, moderate or severe on their own judgment. And uh, we have categorically plenty of, uh, you know, studies available where uh, CMR uh, actually disproves uh, one of the studies when we said it is severe MR, about 14% patients had mild MR. So that is the disparity of MRI versus echo. We don't even mention the blood pressure there. If we have blood pressure 160, the MR is going to be high. If the blood pressure is 90, the MR is going to be different. Then, uh, you know, we don't mention even the aortic valve area when we calculate uh, the aortic stenosis. We just mention gradient. And if we mention gradient, then we say, okay, this is the gradient, severe, severe AS. The gradient is, uh, peak, peak gradient is about 45. So it's a mild to moderate AS and that's it. So if we do that, maybe I think in the line, we would miss uh, about 30% of the patients of aortic stenosis, which are uh, low flow, low gradient uh, type. Am I right, Dr. Muthan? So... I mean, very surprisingly, today only I did a case where aortic valve area wasn't mentioned, and that's not a very uncommon thing. So uh, I think uh, uh, let's spend time when we be doing an echo. That I think is the bottom line. And Dr. Muthan has very wonderfully told most of the, uh, the things on echocardiography. Dr. Amitan, I have a couple of questions. Yes. Now, mm, about the strain imaging, which you have been uh, talking. Mm -hmm. If there is a regional wall motion abnormality, which is obvious, does the strain imaging add more value to it? I have shown you just now the images in anterior wall image where you have the regional wall motion mm -hmm. abnormality, the quantification. Quantification, you can just at a glance of the AFI, you can have that. I think I agree with Dr. Parley because, you know, we've been uh, working very hard on detecting coronary artery disease, not only looking at the global uh, uh, bullseye picture of what is the GLS, we've been trying to find out uh, whether there is a delay in the, in the contraction in those segments which are ischemic or... My, but uh, the 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 accuracy, the sensitivity, and specificity of that is is not really worth uh, uh, we putting an effort on it. For a GLS standardization, also took such a long time, and now we have standardized the GLS in various equipments. And as of now, most of the uh, echocardiography societies do not recommend to use it in coronary artery disease because the segmental strain is not validated as yet and it's not very accurate. And Dr. Because no, many uh, times I found there is a strain abnormality and the angio turns out to be normal. So, so I was wondering whether it is a machine problem or whether it's my uh, measurement problem or uh, as such mm -hmm. uh, there is an issue with the strain imaging. One is uh, you have to take a proper image. Uh, second is the equipment. Uh, third is the operator. So all the three things are very important. This is an operated uh, uh, dependent instrument and uh, it needs uh, some expertise in this. You have to get the correct image of all the uh, all the regions of the left ventricle. 
uh, unlike uh, our uh, standard views we just we see and we decide um, that is not possible when you are doing going for a strain image when a strain image all the regions where you are going to examine should be seen so if some area and suppose uh, you are uh, getting the two chamber view and the entry wall is not seen in that view that strain image will be reported as abnormal so you have to see all these segments unless you see all the segments don't go for this strain analysis second is instrumentation and software the instrumentation and software are best with the ge and tomtac tomtac if you have tomtac original software you can do wonderful strain work similarly if you have ge ecopack the uh, reports are excellent the other systems uh, i will not recommend you will have problems still they have not quantified now felix has uh, acquired uh, tomtac so every felix machine if you are going to purchase purchase only with uh, tomtac software so this is second point third point is uh, operator dependent you have to uh, send spend some time with the patient and i showed you in the beginning how to do that uh, just three views classical views four chamber three chamber two chamber that's all very simple and the machine does everything so uh, you have to grab ideal images that's all so once these things are set right everything will be all right you know just what i want to know how specific, specific are those findings if the strain image in, if you have a good view if you have a good g machine and if you get strain abnormality is it specific that you are going to have some uh, coronary artery involvement there or there is some false positivity there or some other conditions also affect other than coronary artery disease these are the things i want to know strain abnormality can occur in multiple conditions respiratory cardiomyopathy you know that you will have the uh, uh cherry on cream appearance cherry on cream appearance so it uh, occurs in multiple uh, diseases it's not specific to coronary artery disease it can it be in a uh, normal person also can it be in normal person also if there is no heart any structural heart abnormality still can you have strain abnormality that's what i'm saying how specific is it now if you want to have assess normal persons you have normal strain well post exercise if you have strain abnormality and then if you wait and record again it becomes normal this indicates the patient has problem just like your ecg your ecg surface ecg will be normal but only once you do the treadmill test there will be abnormalities no no what i am asking so, on resting strain abnormality if it is there with a good image does Does it mean always that patient has some problem, or even in normal hearts you can have strain abnormality? The no, resting okay, strain think, abnormality. I think uh, let let me let me let me um, see if you talk about the global longitudinal strain. So if you have a global longitudinal strain on a good image, and if you get a low global longitudinal strain, the specificity is high. It's very high, right? But if you talk of the regional strains. the regional strain accuracy is not there right if you are trying to say that if the patient has let's say mid uh, entry ear wall uh, uh, regional strain and you start thinking this could be a coronary artery disease there the accuracy is certainly not there okay okay there are many technical reasons one of the reasons is that what the machine do they it tracks uh, the speckles but when the heart is contracting somewhere you know in the middle of the cyst lay it loses those speckles and then it finds other speckles to track you know this is the limitation of a 2d speckle tracking track tracking so that is why these things are nullified once you do a global longitudinal strain that the accuracy is perfectly good if you talk of a regional uh, strain values saying that this is a coronary artery disease we haven't reached there okay so <laughs> where would you recommend a regional strain in which conditions would you recommend a regional strain analysis none when the, yeah. when the patient has regional wall motion abnormality the strain abnormality will be there <laughs> very easy 
and you can quantify the gls also it is a additional data in addition to your uh, ejection fraction ejection fraction and they can calculate this gls yeah, the other thing if the patient has a left bundle branch block would the strain imaging help uh, whether it is a normal or it is a structurally abnormal heart uh that is what uh, was the last part of my uh, talk uh you can choose the uh, patient for crt based on uh, the uh, conduction time uh if it is abnormally increased more than 63 seconds uh, then uh, the patient would require uh, crt so that can be calculated by that uh, uh, myocardial work and the calculations so there again so Parle, in case you are looking for uh, coronary artery disease in lvb through uh, uh, the strain speckle tracking i don't think so we oh, we, get, we have reached there yeah. okay fine i mean that's probably what you are looking for well, yes, we yes. Want. but we yes. can get some clues uh, of uh, you know which patients are going to be good uh, uh, perfor uh, performers after a crt particularly you have some a apical uh, 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 movements which are specific. So otherwise, if you again try to dig out that if there is coronary artery disease or not in a LBB, it doesn't help. So, just can you be more specific? In which conditions now you will recommend strongly strain imaging? UP. I, I think uh, strain imaging, uh, we should do it in almost every mm. uh, uh, patient. Uh, but only the global longitudinal strain, right? Okay. The, the, the next very good thing uh, which has a very high sensitivity and specificity is LA strain. You know, LA strain gives you clue of many disorders. Let's say, you know, we are now talking about atrial cardiomyopathies. I mean, the, the amyloid starts with the atrium first, and then only the ventricles are involved. You get atrial fibrillation, you get a very low GLS, start suspecting that this is amyloid. So I, I do strain imaging uh, for a GLS, global longitudinal strain for almost all patients, uh, uh, because that global longitudinal strain is sturdy, that we can always use is quite specific. And LA strain, this had been my my practice and occasionally when we have a dilated cardiomyopathy and you want to see rv functions then rv strain also to add on because that prognosticate patients uh, the patient those who have an uh, uh, the dilated cardiomyopathy and have an rv dysfunction uh, you know proven by various methods including strain they have a far more uh, uh, bad prognosis than if you have rv strain which are normal so to sum up for uh, GLS for almost you know, almost every every patient because you detect some subclinical uh, systolic dysfunction in many of them. And, and what is the cutoff value you recommend? For, uh, is it a vendor it, specific? It a, or... Yes, it is a, a vendor equipment. GE tends to give little higher value because they use uh, uh, mid uh, 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 strain and. Uh, Philips used to give a lower values, but they have rectified ever since they have acquired uh, uh, TomTech. And, uh, you know, the value, cutoff value, less than 18, I, we get suspicious. But less than 16 is definitely abnormal. Between 18 to 20, I mean, it, it's okay. More than 20 is absolutely normal. But there are no. various cutoffs for various no. disorders. For example, you have a patient of aortic stenosis. You have a specific cutoff, cutoffs available where you can actually uh, decide. You know, there are you know, things discussed that uh, if you have an AS and you have a, a reduced GLS less than 15, I mean, uh, the surgery or TAVR is better than just uh, okay. even if the patient is asymptomatic. Okay. Another questions? Parlaji, any more questions? Which is the machine which you are using, Amutan? Uh, we would uh, E95. E95. Ultra edition. Okay. That is R6. Now, <laughs> now there is new machine which has come E70, which has all oh, that the... Is 
They have just S70, been launched. S seventy is a lower version. S seventy. No, no. Now new seventy some uh, what? Uh, that no, that's other... Their G's highest version is uh, G V E ninety five R six R six. That I have. Acha. What do you have now? I have. S sixty, but now I'm going to take that S seventy, which has now new. They are just launched launched it uh, one or two months ago. That yes, has yes. all the you, features of ninety five. You also take a three D probe. Yes, seventy yes, is available probe, yes. with a three D probe also. Diamond. Yes, shell. the same, same. Yes, yes, same, same machine. You take yeah. that. It's a very good uh, equipment. Yes, I think uh, UPC is a Philips user. <laughs> I've been I've been a Philips user for quite some time, but I'm also considering now. To switch over, but uh, do you have a Tomtech software in your uh, Philips? Mm, uh, they uh, uh, they don't have a Tomtech software, but you know they have done improvement based on Tomtech software. You know they no, don't, but, uh, don't integrated see, Tomtech. You, software. you can exchange your machine with a machine with a Tomtech software. That so is that good. Tomtech software is very expensive, sir. It's half the price of the machine. You end up spending one fifty percent of the money. So. So Tops is uh, not a matter for a UPC. <laughs> so there is a question, I, I think, I, I, I Amutan, there is a question about uh, Takutsubo, whether you can differentiate ischemic from the Takutsubo. Uh, you cannot uh, differentiate. You have to follow up. So no. So does echocardiography help, whether you are strain imaging or whether uh, anything else on eco parameters, eco whether it can differentiate without angiogram? That it's a talk so because that's a usual issue in the ICU. You have a typical anterior infarct pattern on ECG, echo, and angio turns out of normal. But if, can we avoid angiogram with only echo? Any comments? Without angiogram, how will you? So that's what for talk <laughs> subo. That's what I'm saying. You have anything on echo? Can it uh, help? See, serial echoes will help you. Serial echoes. The improvement in function and uh, improvement in regional wall motion normality you can identify. Yeah, that's okay, but uh... no, it it cannot, Doctor Parlej. I think the yeah. what an echo we are seeing the end uh, sure. damage. You know the dam damage done. So damage done mm -hmm. is what we see on the on, on the echocardiogram. So uh, do you would have a, a strain abnormality on the similar way like you have a coronary artery disease. Similar That's kind right. of regional wall motion normality because you are seeing the effect of a disease. The effect of the disease, whether it's a sympathetic overactivity or abnormality or it's a coronary artery disease, obviously you can't rule it unless you don't done a coronary angiogram. Okay. Yeah, is there any other question? Anyone else? Uh, Dr. Smith? Anyone else? Dr. Muthan, have you, um, do you, how, how confident are you, are you, do you use uh, uh, strain imaging in a coronary artery diagnosis actually? I showed you. Plenty of cases. I do routine strain imaging and okay. stress strain imaging. All does it uh, add, my does it add are to your... by uh, the AFI. I mean, yeah. just does it add... grab the image before the treadmill, after the treadmill, and then analyze. You get beautiful, uh, beautiful output. You see that? Okay, then if there are no further questions. Uh, let me thank uh, Dr. Amuthan for an excellent talk, uh, Dr. U.P. Singh for a good discussion. And uh, I think uh, still uh, this is evolving and maybe further technology might help us to use this more and more often, this new modalities. Thank you, Dr. Amuthan. Thank you, Parleji. Uh, thanks, uh, Dr. U.P. Singh and all Parleji. the panelists and the participants. Shall we close the session? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Thank you. Thanks, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.